Well, bless God. I thank the Lord and I'm praising God for all of his goodness unto me. I'm praising the Lord because he is worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. And you know the word of the Lord says that we were created for that same purpose is to give him glory and honor. So I want to be included in that crowd that says, hallelujah, hallelujah, the king is coming. And the king has come and he is coming. So we just thank God again for another wonderful day. Even though it's winter time, the Bible have already let us know that there are four seasons in the year. So we're in the season now where it's a little cold and things are dormant, but yet alive in Christ. How about that? Things around us are shedding. They have shedded and they are kind of gone. Even bears going into hibernation in many parts of the uh, country or even world. But yet, we can be alive in Christ. Uh, this is again Elder Lewis Crawley of the Wilderness Cry Ministry. And we're yet uh, uh, spreading the gospel, the word of God. Let men and women know everywhere that Jesus is yet saving. He's yet calling people, <coughs> excuse me, from a sin, sinful life, <coughs> excuse me, unto a obedient life in him. So I do pray and hope that you are doing well. Listen, since I was last with you again, I want to share, if you will, uh, a little bit more of my last uh, message that the Lord gave to me, which had to do with uh, Romans 6. And it says, uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And the next word in that second verse says, God forbid. God says with, with great authority, God said it. God said, I forbid it. I, 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 I tell you, don't do it. I say it with a command. And even as Paul has said, I beseech you. So I do even that. I beseech you, don't sin. Let's have a word of prayer. And then we're going to uh, read a few more verses in here and share with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you continue to move throughout the world, move throughout the land. For your word says, when your word is in the land, the whole earth will come to repentance. So, Lord, let your word be spread and let this gospel, the undaughterated gospel, let it be preached that dying men and women everywhere realize that they can have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Well, let us move right along. I don't want to hold you long. Uh, that's just a habit of minds, unless the Lord say differently. In that sixth chapter of Romans, we had read that first uh, verse and started out with God forbid. I want to ask you a question before I do that. Are you dead or are you alive? I used to look at a cowboy picture years ago, and I think it still comes on now and then. It's called Wanted, Dead, or Alive. And uh, they didn't care which way the bounty hunter brought you in. So it was up to the bounty hunter somewhat to decide whether he want to, he will bring you in dead or alive. But in this particular chapter that Paul has left with the Roman church and left to the saints everywhere, that uh, he's given the indication there are two ways that man can represent himself uh, as a representative of God. Either you can do it dead 
or you can do it alive. So he begins here. I, I just like to leave that with you. I like to ask you a question, which is not always, uh, let's say, uh, the right way to do a sermon. But I would just, or a message, I would just like to leave it with you, though, because since since it's, it's me, I'm, I'm going to do it that way. Are you dead or are you alive? And so you can tell. You can tell by your conduct. You can tell the, the way you act, the way you carry yourself the places you go, what you do. Uh, you can just tell in a person's demeanor whether they're dead or alive. And in this case, are you dead to Christ? And then are you alive in him? Or are you alive to sin and dead to Christ? Now that's something, that's something to think about. You either be, have to be one way or the other. Either you're dead in Christ and alive in him, or you're dead in sin and not in Christ. But let's look at this and read along with me. Uh, get your Bibles, if you will, or you can listen and then later on uh, write it down. Romans 6. Let's proceed on. Uh, let me read real quick for uh, uh, the second verse. For God forbid, how shall we that are dead, think about that, to sin live any longer therein? You shouldn't be living in sin. You don't have to live in sin. Because when, when, when Christ comes in and you allow him in through the heart member, I mean this, down in the spirit of your heart, then everything else will die. That's right. He'll take over and you'll be alive in him. So he said, he said, how can you live any longer therein? He, then he says to this, know ye not? There are a whole lot of no's in this particular chapter, a few no's. And it directs you to a specific thing. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. In other words, when, when Christ came in, you went under. Baptism is a submersion. You ought to be so submerged in Christ that all you, have, oh my God, when you come up, see, that's why we don't believe in the role of sprinkling. Listen, they sprinkled back in the Old Testament. They sprinkled blood, you know, and God gave, listen, God winked at that for a while, but now you need to be submerged. That's right. The religion that preaches sprinkling, that's out. G, when you look in Christ, you are submerged. The Bible said, "Repent and be baptized. Go down." It's symbolic. If you go down in Christ, it's symbolic. See, everybody, the, the, there are some folks' hearts have not changed, and what happened is, they, as we said, they go down the devil and they just come up a wet devil. But when you go down, when you let Christ take over your whole being, your spirit, soul, and body and you're willing to surrender to him, then you are baptized. You're submerged in him. And the only thing that folks see is when they come up is Jesus. Again, J John said, I must decrease and he must increase. And I continue to tell you this, if folk can see more of you, Lily, if more folk can see much of you, Lewis, if more, more folk can see much of you, James, if more folk can see much of you, uh, Charlene, if more folk can see much of you, Luke, if more folk can see much of you, uh, Randolph, if more folk can see much of you, uh, uh, Malaya, whatever you, wh whoever you are, if folk can see more of you instead of seeing Christ, then you have to ask yourself, are you really baptized? Because the Bible said we are epistles written and read of men. So people read your lifestyle. They read what you do. That's why I continue to tell you, you should not be trying to emulate anyone you see on television that's not like Christ. Again, I go to you, you got a uh, long, uh, uh, wrangly hair, uh, colored gray and colored red and yellow and green and purple and all that. Man Listen, you did not get that from God's spirit. 
No, when God's spirit speak to you, it said, let your moderation be known unto all men. Anybody see you anywhere, they'll recognize you're different. That's right. You're different. You're strange. Why? Because, again, we are set apart. We are sanctified unto the Lord. We become a holy. We become a vessel which God can use us any place, anywhere. See, you can relate to the world because you dress like the world. See, Jesus was in the world, but he was not of the world. And he told his disciples, yes, you are in the world, but not of the world. And this is why the gospel being preached, folk don't like it. Because it distinguishes you from the world. It defines you from the world. Let us read a little bit further. He said, therefore, we are buried, verse 4, we are buried, for with, buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, now that's talking about you now, Christ died and he was resurrected. And listen, when you're in him, you, 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 you are, you, you, when you come up, you, you raise up in the newness of life. We'll meet, we'll get there uh, sooner or later, even in this verse, you'll, you'll, you'll be risen you raise up in the newness of life. There's things new to you. Again, I have to say it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, you may get tired of hearing, but it just, this is scripture. It don't change. If any man be in Christ, any person, boy, mother, father, sister, brother, grandparents, granddaddy, grandmother, cousin, nieces, and nephew, if any man be in Christ, excuse me, <coughs> He is a new creation. So why are you again grabbing after the world? Jesus said, I do all things to please my father. I always please him. Shouldn't you want to always please God? In everything you do, dress, wear, look, go places, everywhere you go, you can be a representative of God. And the Bible said, beware when all men speak well of you. Because when you began to speak this gospel, when you began to live this gospel, when you began to enact this gospel, when you began to stand on God's word, you're going contrary to the way that the world goes. The world love its own. And Jesus said, if you are a friend of the world, then you're an enemy of God. Let's, get, let's try to get through this. But like as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk how? In the newness of life. You are not walking the same way. You are not doing the same thing. You are not acting the same way. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, oh my God, I felt that. That, listen, he didn't even, it, 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 it was not robbery. For him to be like God. He th didn't think it was like robbery. Why? Because he had yielded himself to the father. And he said. Whatever my father do. That's what I do. He's doing the same thing. His father asked him to do. So if your father is asking you to run around in the street. Commit a fornication. Adultery. Live that gay lifestyle. Gambling, robbing and cheating. Stealing. Uh, all of that. That's not of Christ. And the word I like to use is slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding. But the eyes of the Lord is in every place beholding the good and the evil. So if you call yourself in Christ, I ask you again, are you dead or are you alive? And Jesus said, let a man deny himself, yourself, what you want to do, <coughs> the way you want to act. Notice here, let me, let, me, let me slip over here real quick to Hebrews real quick if I can. And I just want to read this to you in the book of Hebrews if I can find it real quick. I believe it's in that 12th chapter. It just came to me. Uh, watch what the Bible says about Jesus. Wherefore seeing also we are the 12th chapter. Wherefore seeing also we are compassed about with so, so, so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin 
which do it so easily beset us. And let us run this race with patience, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy, good God Almighty, listen, when you die and you are resurrected in Christ, there is a joy that comes to you for the sacrifice that you made. Let me, let me finish reading this quick because I want to get back over uh, to Romans. That for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Every one of us have to bear our own cross. Let a man take up his cross. The world don't want to hear nothing about you having a cross. They don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. They don't want to hear nothing about uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. They don't want to hear nothing about the new life in him. They don't want to tell you. They don't want to stop gambling. They don't want to stop uh, uh, reading their horoscopes. They don't want to stop running around in the street. I'm talking with you when you're not buried in Christ. Looking unto Jesus, the other fish of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Huh? Despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, it was a shame for anyone to hang on a cross. And if you take up your cross and you follow Jesus, you're going to be ostracized, criticized, put down, put out. Nobody don't want to hear that. Folk don't want to hear that. They want everything to go as they want it to go. Every man want to do that which is right in his own eyes. Don't tell a man that you tell a man that he committed adultery. You tell that gay person that's not the lifestyle in Christ. You're supposed to be a new creature in Christ. That gambler, that person that played the horses. Oh, I know the Lord. No, listen. The devil know God. He know Jesus. Peter, uh, Paul I know. and Jesus I know. But who are you? The devil will run rampant in you. So he's despising the shame. He sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, for, cons for consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Listen, when you start living for Jesus, when you start living for Jesus, when you surrender all to Jesus, the world is not going to like you. You're not going to be in agreement with the world in many things they do. They have their banqueting, their dances and their parties, drinking beer, wine, and liquor. If you're in tune with that, you're not in tune with Christ. Remember, you're that new creature. Let's, let's try to get back in here and finish that. That verse 4, the latter part, it says, Even so, we also walk in the newness of life. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Listen, if you don't die with Christ now, you will not reign with him later on. Die. We don't like that word death. I knew some people that if you brought death up, they, they get scared. But Paul gives us a real good look at what happens to an individual, an individual, inside and out. If you die, you're, you're raised anew. If you're planted with him, just like he died. They put him in the grave. The Bible says he was in the grave for three days and three nights. And if I could add this in there, many of us need to be in there more than three days. <coughs> Some need to be in there 30 days, 60 days, 120 days to make sure that you are dead. When they come looking at the coffin, or coming in, coming in to, 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 to receive your body when the, when the uh, 
Autopsy people come around. They're going to do everything. Checking your pulse. Checking, you know, is anything working right? Whether it be your arm, neck. Even in the old days, you used to put a mirror up. When the breath got on it all, they knew you were still living. But if you've been planted in Christ, just as if you go out into your God, and you're getting ready to plant for the spring of the year, you don't put that, you don't want to put that seed on the top of the ground. You want to dig a little earth and cover it up. So anything dead need to be buried. Hallelujah. So that when the time period comes, however long it stay in the ground, if somebody come past and look at it, they said, are you sure you plant it? And the person, oh yeah, it, you, you just give it, you know, they said it takes four to six weeks <coughs> or it take a little period of time for it to come up. But all of a sudden, when that time period comes, you see that little bird sticking about the earth. And that's the same thing with us that have been buried in Christ. All of a sudden, that new man, that new creature began to show forth itself. A friend and I, a friend of mine years ago, I'd come to the city and I try to make this real short. I've come to the city, and before I left home, I had received Christ as my personal savior. But when I got to the city, I let my guard down, and I backslid. Yes, I backslid. And, uh, but the perfume, the odor of what my father and mother had taught us in holiness, in sanctification, was still on me. And I didn't carry myself to the point where I started drinking and, and, and cheating and lying, this, that, and the other. Other things I did do, I confessed. Yes. Hallelujah. We are of the opposite sex. And I love woman. That's right. Just like anybody else. We are drawn, Adam and Eve, drawn together. He didn't pick a camel. He didn't pick a goat, a giraffe. Or rhinoceros, he picked a woman. Oh, glory to God. And women are beautiful. And that's right. Got off in that direction. But oh, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Training up a child in which the way they should go. And I heard the voice of the Lord speaking to me yet while I was in my when I was dead in my sin. That's right. See, when you sin, what you do is really not the sin. The sin is not acknowledging Christ. That's right. That's the big sin. The Bible said when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. And, 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 and if you look at that, what it means is, is that you don't no longer believe in Christ or you didn't believe in it and you don't want to believe in it. And I don't go with this stuff each uh once saved, always saved. Don't go with that. Now, that's me. You, you can do what you want to do. I don't go with that. But listen, but through God's providence, he let an older gentleman on the job carry himself in a way that I recognize those things which I've been taught from a, from a youth up. And it brought conviction on me to the point I, ho, oh, I recommitted myself. I wasn't in no church. I wasn't planning on going to church. But I fell on my knees. Hallelujah. And recommitted myself back to Christ. And he came in and refilled me with the Holy Ghost. And now I'm walking in the newness of life. Don't have no desire for no other woman. But let every man have his own wife. I'm not... Slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding. When Listen, when you see her, as I can say, if you let me say that word, her, you see me. When you see me, you see her. These guys are here talking about, I want to be myself. No, no, no. You're all supposed to become one. That's right. 
If you become one in Christ, you become one. You and your wife should become one to where nothing else can get between you and her. No man, no woman, no boy, no child, mother or father. Therefore shall a man leave his wife, leave his mother and father and do what cleave to his wife. Listen, we'll get back. We'll do that some other time. But listen, he said, if you will plant it, with, plant it together in the likeness of his death, ye shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. I know you want to be, uh, when the time that Jesus comes back, you can say it all you want to, but listen, you, the Bible said, if you are anything but righteous, anything but holy, anything but clean, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. In that great getting up morning, hallelujah, glory to God. You can do anything you want to do, say anything you want to say, but in that great getting up morning, you will be getting up to be judged. But oh my God, in that great getting up morning, if I don't, if I die before he gets back, if I die before the, the uh, rapture, the taking away of the church, that's that sound that coming from heaven L listen I, I could go that way but l let me let me finish this up because we might have to get back in here now watch this he said knowing this he wants you to know something now that our old man oh my god think about that what you used to be you're not that no more that old man think about what you were whether you drank, smoked, lied, cheat, played the numbers, gay, uh, lesbian, whichever way you were, you were. He said, know this, get this record straight. Put this in the file. Brother so-and-so -and, -so and or sister so-and-so -and -so used to be. That's why the Bible even let us know even the angels wanted to know what in the world was going on. When Jesus left glory to come down to this God forsaken world and give his life. Buried. Resurrected on the third day according to this gospel. It mystifies the angels that he can take a drunk. He can take a womanizer. He can take a liar, a cheat, cheat, a murderer. Look at Moses. Look at Paul. If you look at their previous lives before God took a hold, Paul said, I persecuted the church of God. And he did it with authority. He did it in such a way that at the time, I don't believe nobody in the Sanhedrin or anyone else could tell him he was doing wrong. <coughs> he said, I persecuted the church of God. I saw him kill. I, I, I was there when they were being stoned and eaten by lions and, 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 and I brought them into judgment to be judged because if anyone called the name of Jesus I made sure that they wouldn't do it again and look at Paul he was there when Stephen was being stoned See, if, we, if you're not willing to go through anything, denying yourself, giving up, standing there, holding his cloak, and watch Stephen being stoned. You can't tell me conviction came on because Stephen said what Jesus said because he was raised in the newness of life. Stephen was able to say because he had so much God in him, had so much Jesus upon him. 
Hold! The Holy Ghost took a hold of him. And he even said, Lord, forgive them. For they don't realize, they don't know what they're doing. And they stoned Stephen. Saul at that time, holding his cloak, watching him. And you can't tell me he didn't come under conviction. When he saw a man being stoned. And yet had enough Jesus in him. Enough God upon him. To look up. And so, Lord, forgive them. They don't realize what they're doing. And when you can take ostracism, when you can be reproached, when you can be put down, cast down, uh, uh, made to feel like you're all by yourself, that new man began to speak in you. That cre new create creation began to Speak through you. If he smack you on your right cheek, turn your left. Smack you on your left, turn your right. If he curse you, pray for him. So, when you die, when you are buried in Christ, the world can't understand when you love your enemy and pray for them that despitefully use you. You know they're using you. That you know they're doing you wrong. But the Bible said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. And he that touches you touches the apple of my eye. And how dare you put your finger in the eye of God's servant, male or female. Listen, I'm going to have to stop here. I'm going to have to pick this up later. But he says here, know, knowing this, that an old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So you won't become a servant of sin, but you're a servant of the Lord. And I'm following Jesus. And as the song said, where he leads me, I will follow. It's not always pleasant. It's not always beautiful. It's all, all, not always glorious. But oh, God knows how to deliver the righteous. He delivered Lot. He delivered the children of Israel. And he will deliver you. You have to decide whether you are dead in Christ and alive in him or whether you are dead to, in sin and then you'll reap what you sowed. So now, Lord, listen. I just shared these few verses. I, I got to finish this up sometime. We may, may catch this again. But at this time, I'm going to conclude here at this uh, sixth verse. You can score that. Come back again and we'll talk again. But I just wanted to leave that with you. Are you dead in Christ so you can be alive in him forevermore and walk in the newness of life? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray even now that those that are the sound of my voice as they hear this, that they, hallelujah, will get a hold of you and they will become baptized in the spirit of God and raised in the newness of life so that they can live for you the rest of their lives. I pray that you bind the hands of the enemy, cast the devil out of the wheel, the mind, the spirit, and the soul, and you be glorified in, your, in each individual let it for your, be for your glory and for your praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Listen, I, ho I do hope that you have received something out of this. And I'm hoping that you would again uh, share it with someone. If you would subscribe, like, and share. 
subscribe, like, and share. I really appreciate it. And then the other thing, that like, if you just hit that like button, just hit that up for me. I appreciate it. Encourage me. I want to be, I, I need to be encouraged because listen, I, 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 my, it's my aim to teach and preach the gospel, not making it sound sweet all the time. Because listen, if you're in Christ, it's sweet anyway. In God's word is just sweet by itself. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, God bless you. Listen, this is my prayer. May God bless you until we meet again. Stay alive in Christ Jesus. This is my prayer.